So what's up guys, welcome to another episode of First Rides or welcome along for the first time. Today we are taking this 1050 speed triple out for see my first reactions. Naughty naughty! So guys, the golden goose of a question, would I own a speed triple 1050? Learner plate on a Toyota Prius hybrid. Yeah. Average speed, top speed, that's obviously completely wrong. So here we go then guys. So as ever, we are going to take it out for a little spin, give you my first impression, stop a walk and talk around the machine, and then we will carry on riding it a bit more. Um, as ever, the specs will be down in the description. Oh, sounds very nice. The specs will be down in the description. Um, and I'm really excited to take this old beast out for a ride. I've recently taken the XSR 900 out. Um, pop a link up there in the corner and down in the description as well to the first rides playlist. So, a back to back triple test. Let's see what we make of it. So, let's start off then, guys, with a little bit of a background about the speed triple. First introduced by Triumph back in about 1993, I think it was, T509, the original one, had an 800 and something cc engine. Uh, they then moved up to the 955 in sort of the late noughties, early 2000s, and then this 1050 model was in production from 2005 up to 2010. After this they moved on to the later gen with the different shaped headlights you can quite clearly tell the 1050 from the round headlights and obviously the 1050 engine this is actually a 2009 edition so the second gen of this 1050 model which we'll talk about when we walk around later on on the bike a few basic specs to start off with 190 kilos out of the factory i believe that will be a dry weight 130 horsepower and 78 foot pounds of torque we've got a inline three-cylinder triple engine 1050 cc's hence the 1050 speed triple name obviously this was available as the street triple with the 675 engine in as well but this is the big the big daddy o 1050 so these bikes were produced in by triumph basically in an era with the where the street fire generation was out and about so quite a custom theme to them cutting the short end of the back cutting the back end of the bike off so they're quite short quite a steep brake angle on the head 24 degrees on this i believe um, and it's all about customization so that's the kind of pattern that these speed triples follow does make a nice noise doesn't she twin arrow pipes on this uh, we'll talk a bit more about that when we get off the bike and walk around it. Look at that view, eh? Spectacular. So I say this is a 2009 model. It's got quite a few little optional extras on it. It's actually been, it's got twin uh, arrow pipes out the back, which sound very good. Uh, with a decat and an air filter, and it's been remapped. So it's making slightly more horsepower, but it's not really about the peak horsepower figures on these. It is about the torque from that inline triple and how it rides on the road. First impressions, jumping on the bike. It is a very nice riding position. I say I've recently had the XSR 900 out, a 2020 one of those. So it's a good back-to-back -back comparison. And I did own a 955 Sprint ST for quite a few years to commute on. So although this is the 1050, it's just kind of an evolution of that motor that's in there. So I've got quite a lot of experience with the Triumph Triple. But everything's all in the right place. The bars are fairly well swept back. The seat is really comfortable and it feels like it holds you into the bike very, very nicely. You're not moving around on the bike at all, really. We've got these little bar end mirrors, which actually, as far as bar end mirrors go, they're not bad for looking out of and actually easy to adjust on the move and they stick on there. These are genuine Triumph factory extras. The shift feels very nice and positive. It's got a direct shift adjustment on this. Hello. 
so they caught a lot of bits and pieces all over it and I love this burnt orange colour it really stands out in a modern day of beige and silver and black and boringness basically so yeah I love the colour of this machine obviously being a naked bike you're never going to get much wind protection we've got this little cowling on the front but that's really there just for show rather than much aero there's no screen on this one so I hope there's not too much wind noise but the buffeting's okay feels all right sitting here feel quite comfortable it's a nice warm day today so the airflow is always welcome anyway seat to peg height is good i'm quite short quite vertically challenged at five foot seven so it's okay for me seat height is about 817 mil something like that again the actual height will be in the specs but i can stand quite comfortably with toes on the ground and not feel like it's a big heavy brute of a machine that's underneath me controls are very very simple we've got no abs no traction control no anti really absolutely no aids on this whatsoever this is from an era of bike where it's all down to your bike skill and control and also less power so it wasn't quite as leery as these new 180 bhp super nakeds but this really was kind of the birth of the super nakeds from triumph here and it kind of it it rejuvenated the entire company to be honest so here we are just coming into a national speed limit zone let's open her up and see how she tugs certainly does tug feels like it's got enough torque to pull a castle down to be fair so yeah plenty fast enough on the road hits the national speed limit gearbox feels nice and smooth and slick through the changes so this one has been remapped so the throttle does feel a little bit jerky at low lower throttle openings sort of quarter throttle especially in the lower gears around town and that kind of thing but I think that is probably down to the mapping of the bike rather than how it's come out of triumph so it's got these twin arrow cans and a decat as well so that's not going to help nino nino nice little sweep back on the bars here to keep it as a comfortable position doesn't feel as far forward as the xsr that i've just taken out it feels like you're further back on the bike to be honest it doesn't feel like it's quite so much of your weight's over the front clear concise dials nice and simple digital speedo in the middle analog rev counter and you've got some shift lights around the outside of it there we've also got some different options here temperature gauge time etc etc there's no fuel gauge on this so you've just got a fuel light that comes on when you uh, get into reserve and you need to go and add some more go-go juice slow speed maneuvering ability of the bike feels very nice got a decent back brake on it doesn't feel heavy like a big 1050 cc bike at all when you're maneuvering it around at low speed so peg height uh, sorry seat height i've got both tiptoes on the floor here uh a vertically challenged five foot seven so that's good clutch is nice and smooth to release and if you're very gentle with the throttle it's quite a smooth ride however when you just start to hold it it's just bit snatchy and a bit jerky at the lower speeds like that just makes it feel like it's uh it's keen and it wants to get going on the ride never a bad thing so it feels comfortable the, the ride is somewhat harsh i suppose for what i was expecting it's quite bumpy over the roads over the road surface i know a friend of mine's got a 675 daytona and he said that he felt the same thing on his bike it doesn't hold the road very well it's just crashing over the top and hopefully we resolve that with a little bit of suspension work so maybe it's something you could look at doing on this speed triple but it's something i've noticed quite a lot on motorbikes recently so whether it's the same as cars where they're just sprung a little bit too hard for the british roads now they're in such a poor condition maybe that's all it is to it so current prices here in the UK of these kind of machines are ranging anywhere from four to five thousand pounds roughly. This 2009 model has covered nine thousand miles, and obviously the lower mileage and the newer 
the more money it is but four to five thousand pounds for a big super naked basically is good value so who's going to buy one of these bikes well i would say the 750 speed triple is definitely aimed at more of a experienced rider i wouldn't say a new rider although it's comfortable and it's easy to control there's a lot of power and a lot of torque from that triple engine which could get you into a lot of trouble so you'd probably want to start off with the smaller capacity engine however for actually just getting on and riding it a new rider would be perfectly capable of riding this machine it definitely appeals to somebody who prefers more of a uh, a spirited ride shall we say it's quite keen and eager to to get going and it's a uh, its nature feels like it's got a bit of bit of hooliganism in there a bit of Jekyll and Hyde to it so it's quite happy here we're actually in sixth gear cruising along at 37 miles an hour and it's quite happy sitting here it's got enough torque to drag it along but if you change it down the box a few gears and wind it on it will soon turn into a totally different beast plenty of go for overtaking not something you'd need to worry about let's go and see if we can find a nice little spot and give you a walk and talk around this beautiful machine wait Sounds like the Gruffalo when he's hungry. Let's see what it's like off road, shall we? <laughs> Let's go and find a little spot down here. Park her up in the sunshine and let's have a walk around it. So here we go guys, we managed to sneak in this beautiful little off-road track, give you a good walk around of the bike. So this is a 2009 1050 speed triple and like I said on the ride, these are very much like the Mustang of the bike world where they are very customizable, lots of additional extras, not only aftermarket but from factory. So we'll give you a walk around the bike. So this one's covered 9,000 miles and we'll start at the front shall we? So we've got these Triumph bar and mirrors, actually a really nicely finished little component factory with the bike uh, it's got these aftermarket Puig levers on there which is a full length clutch and a stubby brake lever which I'm not actually a fan of because if anyone's ever grabbed the brake in anger you'll know that you just go for it with four fingers so it's always nice to have that we've got a factory triumph brake fluid reservoir whilst we're up here we'll have a quick look at the dash like we said we've got the analog rev counter flip the ignition on so you go through its cycle, we've got your speed displayed in the middle with your miles which has also got a trip meter there uh, we've got engine management light all and temperature and like we saw on the ride shift lights down this right hand side over on the left we've got neutral main beam indicators and fuel light and if we scroll through you can see we've got temperature and the time mpg, average mpg I believe that's probably distance to empty the time or maybe that's the time it's been riding since the ignition was on I'm not sure average speed top speed that's obviously completely wrong and back to your time so nice clear simple concise dash layout moving around the front this bike has actually got it's got the screen the belly pan down there and the pillion seat cover as a factory added optional extra so they came on the bike from the factory little carbon triumph tank cover there a uh, big thing around this is the twin arrow cans two pipes to choose from really nice bit of kit these arrow cans this has also got a decat on it in there and it has been remapped with an air filter and it's had if you can see in there the pair system deleted on the top of the rocker cover and blanked off so it's got those little optional extras there for the speed of it another Triumph factory reservoir cap for the rear mass cylinder. On the back, we've got an RNG tail tidy and these little indicators, which are actually nice aftermarket indicators for change. They're actually sequential, so if we flick the ignition on, and hopefully we can see 
there they are. So not a cheap eight pound eBay job. Actually really, really nice. Tidied the back end of the bike up and the front very well. The additional rim tape and signs on the wheels. That's an optional extra. You can tell the 1050, the later 1050 models, because they have these curved spoke wheels rather than the, I think they were three spoke, the original ones. From 2005 to 2007, 2007 up to 10, they changed to this design. They also came with these Brembo four pot calipers from 2007 to 10, coupled to these 320 mil floating discs. So the early ones, I believe had Nissan calipers, which suffered a little bit with the piston season up and binding. So you can tell slightly later 1050 from 7, 2007 to 10 by the Brembos and the curved or bendy spoke rear wheel as they call them. Another feature of the Speed Triple, single sided swing arm, really, really nice feature on the bike. Um, the only problem with them is you do have to keep an eye on these eccentric adjusters in here. If they're not taken apart and cleaned quite regularly, when you do go to adjust your chain tension, you'll find the eccentric adjuster is seized up. So always keep an eye on those. This current bike is on some Michelin, I think they're road pilots, are they? Michelin Road 6. 180 on the back, 120 on the front. Great tire for the road, all conditions actually feel really, really nice on this bike. So no problem there. Again, another little additional extra from the factory there. Moving round, we've got RNG crash protection on the side of the engine case and down on the bottom of the forks. We've got some Radiator guards, oil cooler and radiator guards, critical on a naked bike like this so that you don't get stones flicking up and damaging all your radiator. Um, aluminium perimeter frame, really nice, interesting, intricate bit of design there rather than a boring old box section. Headlights has got this tint film over it and that is to make it look like the headlights on all the time, although when the ignition's on, you can't turn the light off on this, they are on all the time. When the sun shines on it, it even looks like the light's on then. And this little custom made Union Jack headlight cover, something a little bit different. And I believe the owner has added these stripes himself and these little tiger, this is a monster graphic, little tiger stripes, obviously as a little hop to the Triumph Tiger. So right, you can see it's got quite a lot of extra bits on it. Not all of them, to my taste but that is the beauty of these kind of things where it is all about customization um, we've also you may have noticed got these good luck charm beads up here on the handlebars to keep you safe whilst you're riding and it has had a direct gear shift modification so i believe normally this linkage comes out goes up to your rear set and faffs around here this is just a direct linkage on there a nice knurled grip and i have to say it does feel very very positive when you're up and down the gearbox standard chain and sprockets standard gearing um, but we have got braided front and rear brake hose lines 45 mil upside down forks on the front end of it which are adjusted for preload compression and rebound looks like the compressions on the right leg and rebounds on the left looking in there 18 litre tank rough early 40s mpg wise obviously no wind protection and quite a thirsty engine on it. But this kind of bike is more about riding around looking good and being a bit silly than what it is about getting good miles to the gallon. So there she is, boys and girls. Really does stand out in this bright orange color and the noise it makes. Certainly is a statement as you're riding down the road. So, looks apart, sounds apart. Hope that's given you a good idea of the spec of the bike. Let's go now and find some other roads and get back out there and carry on riding. That's a nice feature, I have to say. The spring on the side stand is not massively excessive, so it's very easy to flick up and down. So, how is the turning circle? Very nice. Not a problem to manoeuvre the bike around at all, and actually, it doesn't feel anything like it's 190 kilos when you're wheeling it around like that. So that's a positive thing. On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. 
Here we go then, it appears that the Triumph Speed Triple is pretty handy in a rally Costrage too. So we're getting a bit sick and tired of following these car drivers around now. Let's go and see if we can find a nice little bit of road with none of these pesky four-wheel vehicles on. Three tuck, tunnel run. So another quick point worth mentioning, if you are looking at carrying a pillion on these, the later 7 2007 to 10 models do have a higher distance between pillion peg height and seat. Worth considering if you're going to take a pillion out quite a lot. Naughty naughty, very nice. come to the conclusion that it's probably on overrun like living through the blitz in London during World War II. That popping and banging, roll off. Sounds like the artillery's coming in. This makes me feel sorry for the kids growing up nowadays. Learn a plate on a Toyota Prius hybrid. Yuck. Kids go out and do a motorcycle license. Listen to that, that's what you need. definitely does encourage you to ride like a little bit of a loony it's got a real Jekyll and Hyde side to it so if you can't keep control of that you need to be careful on this bike watch out here comes the artillery again Must be a B-52 overhead. So how does it stack up then? Well, comparing it to the most recent bike of a similar nature that I've taken out, the XSR, I would say that you feel more in the Triumph. On the XSR, you felt like, or I personally felt like I was sitting on top of the bike quite a lot. Bars may be slightly wider and it shook its head a lot more. It was also a lot more wheelie happy. This actually, believe it or not, doesn't feel quite as really happy as the XSR. Uh, I don't think the actual engine itself makes as good a noise. I think the Yamaha engine sounds a little bit nicer. But I would say that the, the Triumph absolutely inspires confidence in the handling of the machine. So, It really does. Once you've got it tipped into a corner, it's nice and easy with the counter steering to tip it in. Once it's in the corner, it feels absolutely planted and stable in that corner. Once you're on the line, it's on the line and it's following it through. Suspension's a little bit harsh over these UK roads, but I think that could be tuned out with some suspension work. And to be honest, a lot of bikes that I've ridden recently feels the same. I don't know whether most of them come with a 10 weight oil in the forks. I know my Aprilia has got a five weight and it rides the road so much better so maybe that's just something that's standard across a lot of motorcycles on these UK roads here. 
This era of bike definitely appeals more to the analog rider, uh, somebody who doesn't worry about traction control, anti wheelie etc and just wants to go and ride the bike and be more connected with the riding experience of the bike, which I think to be honest a lot of people are finding after riding new machines they don't need all these aids to access all this horsepower on the road something like this 130 horsepower with no rider aids is actually more fun to ride on the uk roads given the uh the current state of them and the speed limits etc and the build quality of triumph i've owned a triumph for a number of years abused it really commuting and i was very impressed with the build quality and when i used to take it apart and work on it how everything was put together, I was more than impressed with the build quality of Triumph. And this is showing it's 9,000 miles particularly well. None of the chrome around the headlights or anything like that has been destroyed. So yeah, really good build quality. So guys, the golden goose of a question, would I own a Speed Triple 1050? Well, this is where it's all very individual and personal to you. Um, it also depends on price point. In my heart of hearts, I am set on a V4 Tuono 17 plate onwards because of the newer digital dash, a few aids, and I've not ridden, or not owned I should say, a bike like that, and I want a V4. Certain things I'm looking for, but they are twice the price of one of these. They're 10,000 pounds really for a nice one. XSR 900 or 700. Uh, lovely bikes very similar naked upright riding position but they are japanese if you want to keep it british then this speed triple i would say the handling on this speed triple i prefer the noise on the xsr i prefer from the actual engine um, but this has got a lot going for it the single sided swing arm the under seat body pipes so yeah, I mean, if I was gonna, if I was looking to spend five thousand pounds on a road bike that I could have a bit of fun on, could jump on, pop across to Europe, go and do some nice twisty roads, then absolutely, I would be looking at one of these. In my current position and my current riding experience, and having owned a Triumph, I would rather try and save the extra money and plump for a Tuono. But that is nothing against this machine. That is my personal choice. So I hope you've enjoyed this ride along today guys, very impressed with the 1050 speed triple. Biggest surprise for me is probably how well it handles and holds a line for a corner. Everything else, the hooliganism, the engine, the exhaust note, the seating position I kind of expected but the handling has surprised me. So if you are probably under 6 foot 2, got £5,000 roughly to spend looking for a street motorcycle with plenty of torque and ease of rideability and also like to be a little bit of a hooligan now and again um, certainly don't overlook a speed triple it's an analog riding feel if you don't like all the electronic gadgets on the new stuff and you prefer the analog and ease of use and just leaving it down to that to be in control go and take one out for a test ride you won't be disappointed well, thanks very much for watching guys look after yourselves and we will see you next time ta-ta for now